Hello for another edition of Nuclear Chemistry. Um, we are in the last chunk of the unit, and this is some practical applications to uh, why we learn about nuclear chemistry, what's so great about it. And so um, we've been talking all about why things decay, what happens when they decay, but why do humans care about them at all? Well, because they could really help us in certain ways. So here are some common radioisotopes and how we as humans use them. The first one that you might be familiar with is dating, figuring out the age of items. So of course, from biology, you should know they're like the living things and the non-living things. And things that are living, we call organic or were living. So at any time living, organic. And then there are things that were never living and those are called inorganic. So for things that were organic or are organic that have passed away, we want to find out how much carbon-14 is left. So things like dinosaur bones, things like um, tree rings, fossilized tree rings, uh, anything that was alive at one point, we could use carbon-14 to figure it out. Um, now, something like a rock was never alive. So how could you figure out how old a rock is? We're going to use uranium-238. Uranium-238. Uh, so again, if you found something, you're like, oh, I think this is a, a once living organism, then it would be carbon-14 and rocks, uranium-238. Tracers. So tracers are things that follow the path of radioactivity. So for example, if we have potassium-31 in fertilizers, this, somebody once said, is that a toy on a carpet? No, that is an aerial, vision, aerial view of a uh, tractor spraying a pesticide or a fertilizer onto a field. Looks like it's either really early spring or end of the season. Who knows? I'm not a farmer. Anyways, uh, so if you find uh, potassium-31 in a water source downriver, you know, where does it come from? That potassium-31 would be in a fertilizer and we could trace where it comes from. Um, a lot of times people use radioisotopes for medical applications. Uh, personal note, when I was uh, in high school, I had acid reflux and they wanted to see how that acid reflux was affecting um, my esophagus because of course that could mean acid coming back into the esophagus. So I had to eat a radioactive egg salad sandwich. So if you're familiar with egg salad, you have, you know, hard boiled egg chopped up with some mayonnaise, maybe some mustard, paprika. Um, but they also sprinkled in some radioactive sulfur. I had to eat it wearing gloves and a nurse wiped my mouth. And then I laid down and on a special, special screen, they could see a glowing green image of where that food was. There was a medical tracer, a medical application using radioactive sulfur. Um, but I'm going to include some that is not that. Um, these are some of the region's favorite ones. So iodine-131. Uh, iodine-131 is used for thyroid conditions. So thyroid, part of the endocrine system with metabolism. And here's how I remember it. I die. So common regions question, you know, what is the medical application for iodine-131? And you would say thyroid conditions. Treat, diagnose, detect thyroid conditions. Then there's also two cancer-related uh, applications. There's cobalt-60, which destroys the tumors. And we have technetium-99, which can detect and diagnose cancer. So cobalt 60, here's, it's kind of silly, but uh, somebody came up with this, cobalt 60, I'm sickly. I'm sickly, cobalt 60, I'm sickly. So go ahead and destroy those tumors. And then somebody came up with technetium diagnesium. If this is ridiculous to you and it doesn't click, then by all means, just try to remember it a different way. But this is how I remember it. I, thigh, for iodine-131, thyroid. Cobalt-60, I'm sickly, destroying those cancerous tumors. Technetium diagnesium. <laughs> I, it sounds ridiculous, I, I know. Um, obviously, 
for all the good that radiation can do, it can also pose harm. Um, some people might be familiar uh, back with the cancer portion is there is something called chemotherapy and um, chemo has to do with chemicals and a lot of times they uh, couple chemotherapy with radiation therapy. So obviously radiation is used to help kill cancers, but what does it also do? It helps to destroy your healthy tissue. So when you undergo radiation treatments for cancers or other things, you might experience other, you know, not so great side effects, like your healthy tissues being destroyed as well. Um, they are constantly in the medical field trying to, to target those uh, therapies to more um, accurate places so that they don't kill your, your good stuff. But again, that's, uh, that is still in the discovery phase. Um, radiation may cause genetic mutations. So in the case of the Chernobyl accident, which we'll talk about in a moment, or um, the Fukushima accident, anytime when people have been exposed to radiation a great deal, it could cause cancer, which of course is mutation of body cells. Or if women are pregnant, it could cause mutations to the fetuses they're carrying, um, which could be manifested in many different ways. Another risk is, you know, those nuclear power plants, which give off such great, quote unquote, clean energy. It, it is clean compared to carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels, but there's this waste that's given off. It's the remains of that fissionable fuel. And remember, fission means the splitting of large nuclei into something smaller. Um, so what are we going to do with that waste? Hey, how about I uh, go bring it out to Manoa? Nobody's going to want it there. Uh, no, you don't want waste in Manoa? Okay, that's fine. So we'll just put it out there somewhere in Kirkville. They, they don't want it. Uh, wait, you, you don't want it? So, so who would want it? Let's just bury it deep underground. Okay, but doesn't that still somehow seek through? Remember, we talked about how um, gamma radiation can only be slowed by things like lead and concrete. It cannot ever be stopped fully. So where are you going to put this waste? That's the real question. Um, and somebody's got to live with it nearby. Another example, and I've been talking about this, one of them, this is probably the largest one, um, was at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. This is in um, Ukraine, uh, the former Soviet Union in 1986. So here we have, uh, this is an aerial view. This is where the reactor used to be. There's just a gaping, gaping hole. Um, where it quote unquote melted down. There was so much heat given off. And of course, um, <coughs> back then, the Soviet Union did not want to admit that there was a failing. They were trying to cover it up to the Western press and, oh, everything's fine. They had just the local fire department come and try to, you know, to put up fires. They did not have the, the safety equipment necessary. And so um, a lot of those first responders. Uh, suffered uh, acute radiation poisoning, and a lot of their their skin just practically melted away hours afterwards. Um, this is also kind of a um, startling picture, but this shows some of the effects of um, radiation and nuclear exposure to fetuses. Their mothers were born, or their mother, their mothers uh, were pregnant when the accident happened and they were exposed to radiation and when they were born, their featured features are deformed. So you'll notice uh, in, incomplete fingers and um, misshapen toes and, and um, kind of enlargements of limbs. And so the social aspect is, you know, nobody knew how to care for these children. Nobody knew uh, what they would need. And so a lot of them were put into orphanages. Um, which is a sad reminder of the disaster. So there are a lot of really good things that come from nuclear power and nuclear use, but there could be some extreme, extreme damage. Uh, here's another plug for HBO's Chernobyl. You should be able to stream it now or perhaps buy it. I would say go to the library, but, you know, that's not going to work right now. Um, HBO Chernobyl, it, there are some adult la a language being used, but... Uh, really good, actually very scientifically accurate, uh, although some of it, like the characters, 
are fictionalized. They, uh, the chemistry is really good and the depictions are really, really good. So highly recommend if you are just looking for something to continue exploring this topic. Finally, um, we've always said law of conservation, mass cannot be created or, or created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. However, we are, we have not been dealing with chemical reactions. We've been dealing with nuclear reactions. So, um, in a nuclear reaction, mass can be converted to energy in a nuclear reaction. So a mass and energy relation, E equals MC squared. Hmm, who can we relate this to? Who does this belong to? Uh, well, that guy, Albert Einstein. Yes, he is a dead white guy, but he's a pretty famous dead white guy. Um, so what his equation uh, states is that energy is given off um, from mass times the speed of light squared. This is a constant. Um, if you want to explore more about that, stay tuned for physics. Physics. Um, all you need to know in terms of chemistry about this reaction or this equation, this is a true equation, is that uh, in a nuclear reaction, we can take that mass and convert some of it to energy. And that's pretty powerful. That's why we do um, use nuclear fuel in a power plant. That's the whole point. And that is the end. So we are all done with our notes. So take this time to go back, rewatch anything you need a little bit more guidance on, uh, take a look at some of the worksheets and the explanations, and be prepared for a um, assessment coming. All right. Bye.